Judy, what is your degree in? Uh, my degree is in Hortus Spectabulus. So what is your degree in? Bachelor of Buttons. <laughs> we'll take your garden knowledge to the next degree, next on Garden Time. Welcome to Garden Time and happy graduation to all the graduates out there. And it is that time of year when things are blooming, but because of the heat, it is also that time of year when weeds are growing. On the show today, we're going to be talking to Tom from Bonide about what you can do when you get weeds in your lawn. And if you don't have a beautiful cap and flower <laughs> like we do, we'll show you how to make a lovely crown. But coming up first, medicinal plants from your garden. I'm at the wonderful Portland Nursery on Stark Street and I'm here with Laura. And Laura, you know, I know that a lot of people right now are really excited, and I love this, about growing their own fruits and vegetables. Yes. However, one of the things that you have done for so long, and I've known you a long time now, <laughs> you've really promoted the medicinal side of nature yes. that we can grow a lot of right here. So first of all, let's just jump right in yep. with some plants that you guys carry that we can grow. Yeah, and safely too. Yeah. Um, I got a little collection of lemon scented stuff going on here. We've got lemon grass, lemon verbena, lemon thyme, and lemon scented geranium. And why that? Why is that? Because important? there's a myth about the citronella plants. Yeah. And um, it, having one plant will keep mosquitoes away from your whole patio. And I've heard that too. Yeah, no. Not going to work. And, and give us the reason why scientifically that probably won't happen. Because what you need to repel mosquitoes is the essential oil, distilled. Okay. And that primarily comes from lemongrass. And you need a lot of it to make... To make that effect happen. Yeah, to make that effect happen and to get a significant amount of essential oil. So what else then would you get this kind of stuff for, like the lemongrass? Why mm -hmm. would you get that? What would you use it for? In I love it in, in tea. So just like oh, drying okay. it and, and putting see, it in I tea. I forget that. Laura. Yeah. I forget that sometimes even a beverage that you drink mm -hmm. is actually the medicine that helps the body and you're yeah. actually unaware of it. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. Um, and the lemon verbena is a great fragrance. It's another one that's nice in tea. So I've had lemon verbena soap too. It, I love that. Yeah. You know why I really love it? Mm. <laughs> it reminds me, my grandmother always used lemon pledge. And it's, oh, to me, it smells it's just so like lemon pledge. <laughs> <laughs> it's really true, yeah. This looks like a sage of some sort. Am it I is. wrong on that? Yep, that's white sage. Um, so this one's very fragrant, the leaves. It's not one you use in cooking. Um, it's one that people typically burn um, to kind of... Oh, what? You mean like in a house when you clean it? What is that called? Yeah, um, cleansing. Okay, yeah. yeah. All right, yeah, cool. For, so for like a sacred space, so to speak. Um, and rosemary is another one that you can use for both culinary and for cleansing nice. as well. Um, and then I brought some bee balm. It's a nice fragrant one, great one for attracting butterflies and honeybees and hummingbirds. Uh -huh. um, but also a really nice fragrant foliage that I um, harvest and use in teas. And again, another tea one, right? Yep. And then this yeah. looks like an herb again. Uh, good old English thyme. Um, some, so many of our common culinary herbs have medicinal uses as well. This one's great for like um, respiratory. Oh, when you're okay. kind of stuffed up, um, people will harvest thyme put it in a bowl with some hot water and you'll get steam and then you put a towel over it's your head. It's nature's and you, vapor rub, it, yes, rub then. Yes, <laughs> exactly, yeah. Well yeah. now you have a bunch of stuff that you've yes. cut out of your garden this I morning. Do. What is it? I have all kinds of fun things, some for you to eat. Um, violets are edible. You know, just because we've been friends for so long, you're, you're not gonna I'll feed me something one. I'm gonna regret. I'll eat you? one <laughs> okay. too. So you just eat the whole thing? Just the flower. Mm -hmm. Well, oh, there's a little flavor. I don't know how to define it. I don't know if it would be, I don't know, it's good. Yeah, it's subtle. These ones are subtle. These aren't the fragrant violets, they're a hybrid. But all violets are um, edible. And a lot of times pe cake decorators will crystallize them right, right. and put them on cakes. It's now coming to almost like a uh, kind of, a, a broccoli flavor, or yeah. a cauliflower, it a wabi, something like that. It does kind of have that flavor, yeah. And what else you got there? Um, I also have another edible, our forget-me-nots. And really, those, those are a medicinal or just an edible? Just an edible. 
So William, take a taste of the forget-me-not flowers. I will flowers. indeed. Hmm. So, why would we eat these? Because they're pretty. <laughs> You're, you're not wrong. <laughs> um, it's a great way to spice up a salad in the springtime. And I could taste that. I could see that in a salad yep. and the taste of it. Yeah. And then what else here? Um, I have lemon balm, another great tea herb. Um, and then I also have some bee balm. But again, Wonderful. I use it for tea. Um, good old weedy comfrey, which you use for oils. Uh -huh. Raspberry leaf, another great tea herb. And um, pungent lovage. Yes, it is. It's, but that smells like a lot of celery yeah. right there. <laughs> it's a lot of celery. And then yeah. you also have this little basket of yeah. things Yeah, I make things throughout the year and, and buy things. Um, this is uh, St. John's wort oil that I made in the summer. Um, it turns the oil red, and I put a little lavender in it for And I put and some peas. on my hands. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you did, I know. And then um, we have a hydrosol, which is uh, white sage and rosemary. So. Yes. Okay. I smell that. Yep. And this is, so this is, now we're actually being able to buy stuff like this, but yep. you also can help people learn make, how to make them themselves. Exactly. Yeah. Well, there you have it. You know, there's so much in nature that we often forget about. And if you want to learn how the, uh, each plant has some uh, value medicinally in your own garden, you can come down to Portland Nursery on Stark Street and chat with Laura here. As Great. always, my friend, thank you so much. Thank you, William. <laughs>First of May, we want the shoots to be about 18 inches tall. Okay. And so this one is has, has kind of taken <laughs> its uh, upon itself to, to get to above keep going, that. Huh? So we take take that down. We wind hops go uh, clockwise, All right. not counterclockwise. They they will get confused, <laughs> and and they they love to be able to to 
to grow and climb on something. Ah, so, so any kind of material. Exactly. So if you're using a string, if you're using a cable, if you're using wood, if you're using lattice, they'll, they'll climb up. They like to be able to have a balance and be able to capture enough sunlight mm -hmm. that they don't shade themselves. So what we do is we limit the number of shoots that we want to climb up. Oh, makes sense. And, and the homeowner should do the same. Yeah, and this is a perennial plant, if we forgot to mention that. So yeah. really, every year, the same plants come up. That's right. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, and you'll get more and more shoots that'll come up every year. And, and maybe a homeowner or two might be cursing me in about five years <laughs> when, they are a, when there's a lot of shoots. Ah. So yeah. you, do have, you have to select. You have to be selective. Uh -huh. Some stay low and some yep. go up on the trellis. Right. Very nice. Yeah. And then what about um, other kind of care for the homeowner? So should we be watching for other things, pests or diseases, watering? Right, yeah. You know, when you have just a few plants in, in your garden, you don't have to be quite as fastidious as we do when, we're, when we have a, a mass of plants all together. But, but what can happen is, is that you could have mildews. And mildew, to, to be able to counteract that, is to give the plant some air circulation. So that's part of what, what oh, is happening sure. when I'm pushing things mm -hmm. down. You can cut these extra shoots off. That's not a problem at all. Um, you can, the, the other problems can be aphids. Mm -hmm. And so aphids will come on probably about in June. And if you limit the amount of nitrogen you put to this plant, it's a perennial plant. It doesn't need a whole lot of nitrogen. If you limit the nitrogen, you're not going to attract aphids huh. as, as much as, as you could. That is interesting. Yeah. So really kind of care like a rose. I exactly. Mean, that same kind of thing. Exactly. So make sure it gets air circulation. Yeah. You kind of prune it that way. Well, what about watering then? So we don't want to water the foliage. Yeah, the, you're right. It, it would be best not to water the foliage. So we're using drip, drip tubing. We have about 26 miles of drip tubing <laughs> that we take care of every year. Um, and so hopefully the homeowner's system's a little simpler than that. <laughs> and, but, but yeah, to be able to give it just a you know, steady feed, um, we, we do about three hours of drip tubing uh, uh, emitting a day on, on a regular sun, huh. a sunny summer day. Gail, I understand that Goshi Farms are really stewards of this environment of, of Mother Earth, and what are you doing for that? Well, you know, we've been at it for over a hundred years. So uh, you know, I say that, you know, we're hearkening back to our grandparents' day when, when it was much more a sustainable uh, operation and there wasn't the chemistry that we had to use today. And so we're, we're taking a look at that and we're, and we're able to actually reduce the amount of insecticides and fungicides that we're using just by, frankly, a lot of common sense. And it, and it may sound uh, a little um, out there as far as being, um, you know, oh, really, come now, can you really do this without some of the chemistry? But we now have our fields with uh, natural predators in place, and we encourage them into our fields by having minimal till and a and, and number of di di different other factors. And we do that um, in, in order to be able to have a balance in our fields. And so and, and a homeowner should have balance as well. You should be able to see ladybugs in your garden. Those ladybugs are going to be eat, eating the aphids that are going to be a problem. Huh? And, it's, and it just goes the whole summer long like that. Yeah, so true. Yeah. So we know about spring care for hops. And so what do we do ongoing into the summer? Yeah, just stand back and let the plant <laughs> do what it wants. Definitely. You know, it, the plant grows very fast. So we have 18 foot trellises. It's going to go all the way up to the, to the 18 foot and then probably up and down another six feet. So Whoa. almost 30 feet of growth. Wow. So you have to realize that if you're putting it on a trellis, <laughs> that you're gonna have a sizable amount of weight that's gonna happen. But as far as pests or anything, you know, aphids can be a problem, spider mites can be a problem. Okay. But again, for, for the homeowner, it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be that difficult. Uh, so just watch for those things. And it can be a little scratchy of a plant, so yeah. be careful with that. But then the fun comes in the middle of August. 
-hmm. when there's harvest. Yes. And so I think that we're going to come back oh, and I hope. visit and kind yes. of see what professionals do. And we'll then we'll also talk about what homeowners can do about harvest too. Great. Uh, so Wonderful. we'll see you later in the summer. Absolutely. See you then. So if you have any other questions, please go to Garden Time and then watch for that segment later this summer. Thanks so much, Gail. Thank you. So I'm standing here with Wayne from Steel Northwest and you know it is that time of year when we're we're outside more and we're thinking about not only planting stuff but also cleaning up our driveways and things like that. Tell me about this product. Well the Steel now has four different pressure washers nice. and each one of them has a, a variety of common features to it but the bottom line is depending on the one you need um, it'll do the job for you and if you go to your dealer at steeldealers.com you'll find out where you can go and see all four of them and they'll explain all the bells and whistles. And I would bet you anything because I remember when I first got my first steel chainsaw it was back when they still everything was a pull one mm -hmm. and it really was much easier than what I'd been doing. I bet the same thing is true with this. That's right they have a feature on this that makes all of them an easy start Nice. and that's something that's really nice because most are not. And then I'm seeing some uh, some hosing there so is this also one of those great things that you can you know, put like cleaner on the concrete and stuff and really spray it on? That's right, there's a, a detergent attachment, it comes with all of them. Nice. Also non-marking hose so that you don't leave black marks everywhere right. that you go. And one of the neatest features is this actual spray handle itself. It's a kind of a reverse lever uh -huh. so that your strong fingers are the ones doing all the work. And that makes sense. It's not as fatiguing when you're using it. And then a lot of times I've been confused when I've used other type of sprayers that there's nozzles and I'm never sure what those are but you have some here. Yeah well when you're cleaning something up typically what you're going to want to do is go with the broadest uh, broadcast that you've got the widest one right. and see how that works and then work down towards finer and finer. If you go down to the finest one there's a good chance you're going to damage something before you get there so you got to be careful and always refer to the user guide or your right. Um, because that's going to indicate what you should use it for and not, and also the kind of safety gear that you want to wear. Because even with things like this, these are actual tools, and they can do some damage if you're not careful. That's safety right. is important. That's right. It's an important subject. Well, there you have it. For more information on this great tool, uh, you can go to gardentime.tv. We'll click you over to where you can find all four types and really pick out the one that works best in your yard. Thanks a lot, Wayne. Thank you. Garden Time is brought to you by Portland Nursery, a passion for plants, a nursery for plant people. Hi, I'm Sarah from Portland Nursery. Gardening makes for wonderful family time. Whether it's updating your landscape or planting a veggie garden, at Portland Nursery, our great selection and staff of professionals can help ensure your family's success. Visit PortlandNursery.com for a list of our classes, events, or sign up for our newsletter. Portland Nursery, let our family help your family grow at 50th and Stark or 90th and Division. Since 1926, the Bonite Company has worked with homeowners to make their homes and gardens beautiful. If you have a garden problem, Bonite has the answer. 8 Insect Control takes care of most lawn and garden insect problems. Effective against more than 100 insects, it can be used on flowers, vegetables, fruits, and even on houseplants. Visit Bonide.com to find a local retailer and to download your free Bonide Problem Solver app for your iPhone or Droid. Why have a yard that looks like everyone else? French Prairie Perennials can give you something different by using our unique form of landscape design, visualscaping. We can give you a landscape as unique as you are. Focusing on year-round color and low maintenance allows you to relax and enjoy your yard all 12 months. On-site plant demonstrations allow you to see how beautiful your garden will look before you buy. Give us a call or stop by our retail location on weekends. French Prairie Perennials. Hi, I'm Burl Mossel with Rare Plant Research. We're a nursery and garden. You're invited to join us the one week in the year that we're open to the public. You can tour our gardens and get inspiration for your own garden. We have 10 greenhouses full of rare and exotic plants. Enjoy lunch from a local caterer while tasting wine at the greenhouses. We will be sampling our wines from Villa Catalana Cellars in the Garden Conservatory Tasting Room. For directions and information, visit us at rareplantresearch.com. Join us and get inspired. Oh, 
Well, I'm at Woodland, Washington at Sagawa's Nursery with Brian Sagawa, and today we're going to be talking about vines. Uh, you know, they're a wonderful garden plant because they really can do some some lovely covering of things and and you know give us a lot of beauty. So let's you have some that are stunning with foliage, but also a lot of blooming ones. So let's just kind of go through them here and see what sure. you got. Yeah. Um, that's that's right, you know, like such as the wisteria, very, you know, they're very aggressive growing yeah. vines. And like you said, um, you know, how to control them, what to, you know, there is a lot of maintenance on when to prune, but you're right, right in front of us here, William, this is climbing hydrangea variety Miranda. Wow. It's not so uh, invasive where you're going to get stuff coming up from the ground or all over. It actually can take like a dry shade over a, say, a, a concrete step well, or uh -huh. just all these different applications for dry shade. And the shade. foliage itself almost looks like a bloom. It's really quite dramatic. I think that As offers As is this a lot. one, this is brilliant color. Yeah, that is. You can see kind of this nice chartreuse green, yellows, golds, um, a lot of pop on that for early, you know, May and And this one April. is Fiona Sunrise Jasmine. That's, that is. That, Absolutely beautiful. You can kind of have the fragrance that you yeah. get, the honeysuckles, wisterias. Well, now, this looks almost like some type of a tomato bloom. <laughs> <laughs> Close, but uh, it's actually um, potato it vine. That's okay. what it is. Yeah, that's the blue one. And uh, kind of a nice, thick, coarse, um, not really, it's got viney growth, but it's really, we put it in the vine section, but you can see it's just kind of a, kind of a stiff stem actually, but you can put that on a trellis, an arbor. Sure, and you, you know, a lot of the Lanisteras, the, uh, the honeysuckles over time get pretty thick stem too, so you can shrub them up almost like instead of a vine as a shrub. That's but tell us about these. Very are true. You can, they're very versatile, shrub or vine, but um, this is gold flame, and right behind it we have the mandarin. Wow. Uh, kind of newer honeysuckles in the last, I, I don't know how many years, but um, fragrance along with, I mean, you can see that a range colors of colors. Are yeah, you got the orange with the pink and just a lot of flowers per. And quite a long bloom but, time, too. I think it does yeah. have a long bloom time. That's, you know, the honey cells are not re-blooming, but they do sure have a long yeah. bloom time. And yeah. the bigger the vine, logic would tell you, the more blooms you'll have. So yeah. it would appear that you even have longer blooms. Th right over right. here is a couple more beautiful golden colored ones. Let's talk about these. Yeah, more golden and the, the greenish chartreuse. Thing. This, the golden hops, it's been around for I don't, a long time, but you can see when it first comes out, boy, it's, yeah, has a lot of that nice golden And talk color. about easy maintenance, it dies down to the ground by itself each year, so That's it can't right. get much easier than that. Yep, and it, just in that little bit of time, it looks like it's already climbed up uh, yeah. the arbor here, so that's pretty well, fast. Now, the lovely <laughs> co-host Judy really fell in love with this one, and this is a relatively new introduction too, which yeah, is that? This is Virginia Creeper. Um, it's just now unleafing with all the wow. bright colors, but it does hold, I mean, there you go right there, William. Yeah. You can see it goes back to the green and white. And, but when it first leaves out, it actually it's caught all our eyes because we've never really seen this come in at this time, but you know, it's just unfolding. And eventually you're going to have more white, that creamy white, but, uh, boy, when this thing first leaves out, it's a... It's well, that's the beauty of var variegation because it changes almost all the time. Yeah. Each year it changes the leaf strain, so it can really add a lot of beautiful texture and color it, to your garden. That's right. It's changing out throughout throughout the seasons. Well, right. Brian, let, let's quickly cover a couple okay. of things. Of course, a vine that is left on the ground is really just a ground cover. So if that's not what you're going for, <laughs> they need something to grow on. That's true. Um, fence... I, cyclone fences is common. I don't really recommend it, or even a wooden fence. You know, when you sometimes changes happen, fence sure. lines change. But uh, you know, there's uh, trellis. There's you can build so many different things off of just a uh, simple one by one, you know, or some kind of uh, wood Something structure. Something that you can throw together. Exactly right. Well, then let's also point out a couple of things that uh, in a garden, there are certain vines that really even something of this size isn't going to be big enough for a long term, mm -hmm. like a wisteria or a kibia. I think you're right. That's, you know, especially something that's powder coated or a structure like that, it doesn't really need anything besides maybe just some, something off the side. But um, yeah, it would be way too aggressive to put anything yeah. over such a structure. I mean, it would work, but uh, sometimes you have to be cautious. You have to what, use a little prudence. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> You know, the tags or ask, ask your salespeople what's going on with this and how it grows and you can yeah. get a lot more information. Well, and, and no better place to come than uh, up here at Sagawa's to talk to their sales staff and, and find out which vine really will work best for you and how to maintain it in the future. Brian, thank you so much, my friend. Thanks, William. Since 1982, the wall has been making local gardens beautiful, naturally. 
Whether you need a new wall, concrete patio, fire pit, or driveway, the wall's expert craftsmen can build it. We back up our work with a five-year warranty so you'll know it'll last. We use the highest quality materials, including stamped colored concrete, natural stone, and we're the leader in using recycled concrete. Create an outdoor environment you'll enjoy for years with the help of your friends at The Wall. Peonies, bold and beautiful, an old favorite, but ever new, and perfect for your garden. At Adelman Peonies, you'll find hundreds of different peonies, bush, ito, and tree peonies covering 20 acres. Come stroll the display garden, then find a special plant or bouquet to take home. Join us any day of the week for beautiful color or weekends for special events. Adelman Peonies is just east of I-5 at exit 263 on Brook Lake Road or online at peonyparadise.com. When you plant your flower baskets and containers this year, consider Black Gold All-Purpose Potting Mix for the best results. This worm castings enriched, well-drained potting soil has a control release fertilizer to feed your plants up to six months. Black Gold All-Purpose Potting Mix now contains resilience for enhanced plant growth. Available at garden centers everywhere. For more information, visit blackgold.bz. All the riches of the earth. Do you have a leaning or broken fence? Fix a broken fence with ease. Made in Oregon, the sturdy fence post bracket can mend your drooping fence. Strong wind, falling debris, dry rot, and wayward drivers can all cause havoc on your once sturdy fence. Our sturdy bracket attaches to your existing fence and is easily installed in 30 minutes. Limit waste, materials, and save money by fixing your existing fence. Purchase online at sturdfence.com or visit participating PAR Lumber and Pro Build stores. No matter what shade your green thumb is, you can find the plants and the help you need at Wavra Farms. We're filled with an astounding array of colorful plants to fill your garden. In addition to wonderful annuals and perennials, we are known for our hanging baskets. We also have all your garden essentials and we have great garden gifts too. From beginner to expert, you'll find something new and different with every visit. Wavra Farms, located off Highway 22, exit 5, east of Salem. So, you know, we understand at Garden Time that a lot of us still love a beautiful lawn, but that often takes some effort. Well, I'm here with Tom from Bonite, and we're going to be talking about some products that really make that process so much easier. So what do you have for us today? Well, I've got a number of different uh, products to control both broadleaf weeds and grassy weeds in our lawn uh, and not harm the lawn, not harm the turf grasses. I have natural choices and synthetic. Uh, and I think we should maybe point out and uh, give you a visual of what the difference is between a broadleaf and a, and a grassy weed. Right, because I think a lot of people understand words like broad yep. but, and grass, but what does that mean when we're in a lawn? Well, can we show you? Yeah, let's okay. look at it. So this is what we typically see in most of the, the lawns in the Northwest. So you can see we have turf grasses coming up, but here we have a big patch of clover. A lot of clover, Okay. Yeah. So clover is one example of a broadleaf weed. Okay. Okay. Now if we move over here, here's a dandelion. Yep. Okay. And these are famous in the Northwest because of that big bright yellow flower and then it's followed by that, that snowball kind of that, that yeah. I call. Uh, but again, that is a broadleaf weed. Okay. So the big fat weeds that pop up in our lawns. Okay. So really, it, it, the broad is a pretty self-descriptive concept then. It's things that have wider leaves. Yep. So, you know, here's, here's a good visual. So this is just simply a lilac leaf. Uh -huh. Okay. And one way to quickly identify uh, a broadleaf weed, which we call a dicot, uh -huh, okay, okay. is the branched veins in the leaf. All right. Okay. If we got a close-up look of the dandelion leaf, and the clover, you would see branch. They would have that veins. veining out. Yeah. Okay. That's what we call a dicot. Nice. Okay. And then on the opposite side is grassy weeds. All right. Okay. So here's a big patch of um, an unwanted grassy weed. And it looks different. It does. It, it typically is a little bit wider uh, blade of grass. It sure. grows a little faster than our turf grasses. And if you can notice, uh, just slightly off color, a little bit lighter yeah. green, so yep. it's unsightly. And I noticed in, in talking about broadly, she used the word dicot. I'm assuming that there's a different term for grass then. Yes, yeah, so grass, whether it's a weedy grass or a turf grass, this is a monocot. 
and if we had a close-up visual of a blade of one of these grasses, uh, the veins would run parallel. They would run up and down. Okay. So that's a monocot. So I would think then, it, from, from my science, from my past, mono tends to mean like singular one, so it's, yes. it would be more of a, a singular veining upwards than that spread out of the broadleaf. You're absolutely right. But your products do both, right? Yeah, so the active ingredients that we use in our different products can selectively identify a broadleaf, dicot, and or the grassy weed, the monocot, and um, take care of those, control them, but not harm our turf grasses. The regular grass that you actually want to look yes. beautiful. All right, let's walk over and get some of the stuff okay. and then we'll start from there. Good. So now Tom, these uh, sprays are actually for the broadleaf weeds in a lawn. Correct, both of these, the Weed Beater FE and the Weed Beater Ultra are going to do a wonderful job for the broadleaf weeds, the dicots yeah. in our lawn and not harm our turf grasses. And Tom, I noticed again on this one, you got that brown splotch there, so this is a natural one? Yep, so you're holding the Weed Beater FE. You can see the tan swish or the right shoulder of the front of the label. Right. That's indicating that it's a natural active ingredient. And then in my hand, the purple shoulder, this is a synthetic active ingredient. And then um, I'm, a, I'm also gonna make this assumption that these though, unlike the Moss Killer, you don't want to get any of these on your beds. You want to stay on the lawn. Again, spray on a dry day. They're both going to need about three to five hours of dry weather after we've applied. On a calm day, in general rule of thumb, even on a calm day, I like to keep that low to where we're spraying it right. and avoid the flower beds. Perfect, perfect. Yeah. Now, if these cover the broadleaf, what's going to cover the grass? Great question. So this one, this is our Weed Beater Plus crabgrass. Again, has the purple shoulder, so it's a synthetic chemical. Now, uh, a little different than the two you're holding, this one will be ten uh, temperature sensitive. Okay. So we need daytime temperatures of 65 and above. Still need that five hours of dry weather after we've applied it, okay? And most importantly, for our weedy grasses, not our broadleaves, but our weedy grasses, we need to be spraying this on that weedy grass before it sets its seed capsule. Okay. 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 So with all of that said, the window of opportunity is a little bit short, but if we if we spray during that window, very, very effective. Well, if you play the game right, you'll you'll actually win then. Absolutely. Won't you? <laughs> yep. Well, there you have it. So for more information, not only on all of the different products that Bonite carries for the home gardener, but also for the places that you can go, the, the uh, garden centers close to you to buy this stuff, you can go to gardentime.tv. We'll click over to their website. Thank you so much, Tom. Thank you. Welcome to Blooming Junction, where it's easy to connect with nature. At Blooming Junction, you'll find beautiful, healthy plants, good, fresh food, and a place to regain peace and calm in your life. We have an unsurpassed collection of unique and distinctive plants and the expertise to help any gardener be successful. And we feature Blooming Advantage plants. Come check out Blooming Junction for an inspiring experience in the garden or in the kitchen. Blooming Junction, offering quality plants for beautiful gardens. Create a beautiful living space both inside and out with the help of Terra Casa. Outside, you'll find pottery, fountains, and decor to make your garden unforgettable. And inside, there are home furnishings and just the right accents to make your home warm, inviting, and most importantly, comfortable. Terra Casa has a huge selection of merchandise to fit any home or budget. Plus, we still have all the unique and distinctive gifts that you have come to expect from Terra Casa. Terra Casa in downtown Damascus. The irises are blooming. The Shriners Iris Display Gardens are now open and free to the public. Surround yourself with a rainbow of color of over 500 irises. Or take a stroll in our 10-acre display garden. Smell the fragrance as you see iris paired with other beautiful blooming plants. Check out our cut flower display and pick up something for that iris lover in our gift shop. Take home a cut flower bouquet or order some for your own garden. We are easy to find. Take the Brooks exit off I-5 and follow the signs. DRAM is celebrating 75 years of design and manufacturing of quality watering tools. DRAM products feature nine water patterns and are designed to nurture your plants with a shower of rain. DRAM for lawn and garden, available at garden centers near you. Locally grown, fresh from the farm, stylish and sustainable, your dream yard starts at Owl's Garden and Home. 
Bring home the hues of summer with our gorgeous hanging baskets, grown locally on our farm. Choose from sun or shade combinations to instantly brighten up your home. Hanging baskets for a pop of color that brightens your home all season long. Owls Garden and Home in Woodburn, Sherwood, Gresham, and now in Wilsonville. When we're in our gardens in the spring, it seems we see a lot of slugs and even snails. You know, the snails, it seems that uh, we're seeing them more and more. They may look pretty, but they're doing the same damage that slugs do. And if you have a, you know, trouble identifying what that damage is, we have a couple examples. This is a hosta leaf, and it's that space right there in the middle that has clearly been chewed on by something. And even iris leaves can be uh, attacked by them, uh, either on the side or in the middle. Now the reason they have holes in the middle is because unlike humans and a lot of animals, uh, we have a mandible jaw, which just simply means we can open and shut it, thus giving us the ability to talk. Slugs don't have that. They set on a leaf and they have a rasping jaw. So they do this and eventually, just as you can see that damaging happening there, that's what happens and they put a hole in it. Now we're showing you this damage on hosta and iris leaves, but if you see it on other plants, it's probably slugs and snails as well. We are going to tell you about a wide range of products that will help you in your garden to get rid of these pests. The first one is by Bonide, and this is a product that contains metaldehyde or meta. So when you use this, you do have to be careful around pets and children. The way you apply this is just like you're using a, a shaker of salt around your garden. It's just a light sprinkling in and around the plants. Another product that we have is by Deadline, and there's a liquid and a granular. And so when you do use the liquid, you want to apply it by little drops. You don't want to over apply it because it will not let it be as effective. Also, when you're using the granular, again, you want to scatter it around the garden. Now, if you're looking for something that's organic and more safe around pets and children, you might remember the name Sluggo. It's been around for several years now, and it is basically just iron phosphate. A lot of different names now have iron phosphate only, like Cory's, that's all iron phosphate. Espoma, it's a great product, but it's also iron phosphate. Uh, Bonite also has that kind of natural process as well, but they have done the job of adding spinosad, which will take care of like cinch bugs and cutworms and those pesky earwigs. Well, I have a real organic method to use, which is using beer in a little container and put that just a little bit away from the plants. The slugs and snails will be drawn to it. They'll fall into the container, but they'll die happy. <laughs> yeah, for a lot of us Pacific Northwesterners, <laughs> that's just not an option. Ah. Well, I have another method. You can use this copper tape. Now, this is just a little bit more expensive, but this is actually a barrier that you could put around a prize plant or a container. And the slugs and snails cannot go over it because they get an electrical shock and are shocked by it, and they'll drop off. And then the last and final method that we have today is using a piece of wood in the garden. And so check it the next day, the next morning, and if you flip it over, you'll find lots of slugs and snails kind of hanging out underneath it. You can use your pruners to either cut them in half or drop them into a soapy bucket of water, and that'll take care of them. So for just a little bit of time and effort spent in your garden, you can take care of slugs and snails and keep your garden looking lovely all season long. Come to where the color is. Come to Egan Gardens. We've worked hard growing healthy plants for you so that your gardening is easy. Add sparkle to your garden with our perennials, container plants, and skillfully designed baskets and planters. Get the best deal of the year on our beautiful geraniums. All sizes of zonal and ivy geraniums are on sale now through May 24th. Egan Gardens, where it's all about the plants. We're located west of I-5 at exit 263 on River Road. Two stages, 25 shows, one sweet weekend. It's the 25th anniversary of the Oregon Jamboree, presented by Boulder Falls Inn, starring Jason Aldi, Little Big Town, Chris Jansen, Lauren Elena, Chase Rice, and on his farewell tour, Kenny Rogers. You got the Oregon Jamboree happening August 4th through the 6th. Tickets and camping on sale now at OregonJamboree.com. Let's get this thing started. It's my kind of party. Since 1987, French Prairie Gardens has brought you the best in farm fresh produce, beautiful plants, and memorable family events. Spring is here, and now is the time to get your garden ready with our wide selection of bedding plants and hanging baskets. 
Experience the best the country has to offer at French Prairie Gardens. Take the hard work out of yard work with the leaf hopper. The leaf hopper, the ultimate garden cleanup tool. Simply fill, fold, and funnel your yard debris away. It eliminates the back-breaking work of garden cleanup. When you are done, you can even use it to apply garden mulch in a precise area. Made from permeable material, it resists mold and mildew and folds away for easy storage. Get the leaf hopper at Quality Garden Centers or at EasyHallTarp.com. At Garland Nursery, you'll find top quality plants, four generations of garden know-how, fun and fantastic garden decor, and the best in garden supplies. Come visit us at Garland Nursery. Since 1937, inspiring beautiful and bountiful gardens. Garden Time's Incredible Edibles! Well, it is such a delight for me to be standing here with Myrna, and we are at World Foods at the Everett location. And you know, Myrna, it is that time of year when spring is happening. We're looking forward to, to fresh produce coming in, and you're going to give us a recipe that uses a lot of that. Now, tell me what we're going to be making. So we're going to be making a uh, red uh, cabbage uh, wedge salad. We're going to roast our cabbage in the oven, and we're going to top it with quinoa, yellow beet, and the feta cheese, and we will be doing a pomegranate and olive oil vinaigrette. Now, all of that I've heard of, except the, the, the yellow beets, that's, that's a newer variety to me. So what, why would you choose those over the regular beets? Uh, they're not uh, as mild as the regular beet, and I love the color, and uh, they're not, uh, they don't stain your hands yeah, like right. beet. <laughs> so what is the first step you're gonna take in creating this? So we're gonna boil the beets first. Okay. Uh, they, it's, it's gonna take around the two hours to boil them at once. Wow. Home. Okay. And then what's the next step? And the next step is to get your cabbage and cut them in half and thirds. Place them on your tray. And you really love good knives, don't you? Because those are hard to cut like that. Yeah, very good knife. And that's all you do to them. You're not going to season them or anything before yeah, you Yeah, I will them? season them with uh, salt and olive oil and place them in the oven on 450. And about how long do you think that takes normally? Uh, it depends on the oven. Uh, it takes around uh, 20 minutes at least if, uh, for the house oven to be done. Okay, okay. So we're going to let you place that and then we'll be right back. Thank you. Okay, now Mirna, we're at that stage where the cabbage is still in the oven but you cooked the quinoa, and then these are the yellow beets, right? Yeah, those are my yellow beets that are already cooked. And how long was that process so, again? So, around a couple hours, but the quinoa is pretty fast. It's around 15 minutes. Okay. Now I'm gonna slice them, dice them small. And you really, they're very, very soft and tender very now, soft. aren't they? Yeah, you have to be patient with beet. Make sure they're very soft. And you're right, there isn't that, that kind of pinkish red stain everywhere now. <laughs> no, it's a beautiful color. So I'm gonna let you finish that up and then when we come back, we're gonna pull out the cabbage and complete this wonderful dish. So here's our quinoa with the beet. And this is just the, the preparation for the top of the salad now that you're blending together. Yes. Kinda mix it together. I'll add some salt. Lemon zest. I love lemon zest. It gives the freshness to everything that you do. And then we're gonna use the lemon juice also. So you zest first, then you cut and squeeze. Yeah. Why waste a good uh, the peel of the, the zest? Right. I, I couldn't agree more. Olive oil. And this is the same olive oil you poured yeah. onto the cabbage. And what is that? That's a um, pomegranate molasses to oh give my. it a little bit uh, of sweetness. And Marina, we can buy all of these different things at the store, can't we? Yeah, we have them all on our shelf. 
And so what we're going to do now is it's going to be about just a few more minutes before the cabbage is ready, then we're going to come out and complete it. Yeah. Okay, Myrna, this is the cabbage. What are we going to do with it? So we have our plates ready for uh, plating. Uh-huh. So here's the cabbage on each plate. And you're just setting the wedges out. Yeah. Now this is, this is the topping that we, we just finished making, right? Yeah. And look at that. So you're just, you're just ladling right on top of there. Now you know in my world, I would call that done, but you're not done, are you? No, we still, the amazing feta cheese on it. Uh-huh. And you can slice feta, you don't have to crumble it. Well, of course, now I'm going to have to give that gonna a try. Melt, <laughs> it's going to melt over the hot cabbage. It will taste so good. Okay. And to finish our beautiful salad, we have our pea shoots here. And you those are just fresh peas? Fresh. I mean, you're literally cutting them right now yeah. on the ground. And then I would like to add a little bit more dressing to my salad. So I'm going to put more on the side, pomegranate molasses, more olive oil, a little bit more salt, more of the zest. And so you're just, you're making this just to be a finishing touch on top, right? Yeah. Because really a, a good dressing can just, that, that is like the cherry on top, right? Yeah, it is. <laughs> you need that little bit more to dip into your uh, salad, into a dressing. You need a little bit more on the, your plate. And then after this, it, this, this really is the completed salad. So here we are ready to eat our salad. All right, Myrna, while I have a taste of this, you're going to tell everybody that there are three different locations you guys have where they can taste this kind of wonderful food. Yeah, we have our store on uh, Barber Boulevard, Barber World Food, and we have uh, our store also here on Everett, World Food Everett, and then the restaurant uh, Yahala Lebanese Cuisine, where uh, you get your food hot on the table. Oh my goodness, and the flavors, that's what I love about it. There's so many great flavors there. It's absolutely delicious. Thank so you. for more information, and if you're just itching to try this yourself, you can go to gardentime.tv. We'll give you the recipe there, or you can visit any of the three wonderful locations where you can have a full meal. Thank you so much, Thank Marinette. you for uh, including me in the show. You're welcome. Subaru Garden Days returns to Capital Subaru in Salem. Join us for a day of food, fun, and garden excitement. Select garden vendors join William and Judy on the Parkway from 11 to 3. That's Subaru Garden Days, June 3rd at Capital Subaru. Your way on the Parkway. Your center for home and garden decor, Garden Gallery Ironworks has everything you need to make your home a showcase. For the inside, we have a great selection of Kelly Ray Roberts items, and our farmhouse style department is full of one-of-a-kind gifts. For the outside, we have arbors, trellises, planting beds, and garden decor. Everything to make your neighbors jealous. Check out our new website and then come visit us in Hubbard. Garden Gallery Ironworks. Now's the time. It's the standard TV and appliance store-wide sale going on now. Huge price cuts on top brand appliances, mattresses, and 4K HD TVs. Get a Samsung front load washer with steam only $524. Or a counter depth Samsung stainless steel French door only $999. Save big on a stainless steel Maytag dishwasher only $449. Plus get a Beautyrest Queen mattress for just $398. Hurry, the store-wide sale won't last long. Standard TV and appliance. So I'm here with Kim Foran and we are at Geranium Lake Flowers and today we are going to be talking about a different type of crown, aren't we? So tell me what we're doing here. As opposed to a diamond crown? Yes, possibly, or gold. <laughs> <laughs> um, we are making flower crowns and flower head wreaths and they are very fashion forward and very popular. Um, we're making a lot of crowns in lieu of, say, lays for graduation, you know, uh, different wedding clever. kind so of... So you could wear that to a prom then? 
A prom, yeah, yeah a prom. Anything. <laughs> yeah, you could wear it um, walking down the aisle. <laughs> You could wear it for your baby christening, <laughs> for your quinceanera. What else? I think you can pretty much just wear it around the house. And honey. this this is the one you're going to have me wear now. Well, this one is more of a Greek god look, and that. this is Hebe, um, uh, bay leaf, and then rosemary. So this is for remembrance, and right? And so, it, well, what? <laughs> yes, of course it is. So what do you, how, is there a way that you choose these? How do you make them? Do yeah, just um, I'll show you how to do it. First, I'm going to put mine on. I made this one uh, just before you got here. And this is a little full, right? But this okay. is kind of the style these days. They're very cool. I know, they're really cool. So let's make one. So I have a, a couple different kinds of, um, you need a ribbon or some sort of, uh, something to put the actual flower material on. This next one, we're gonna do like a little crown like yours to uh -huh. sit on your head. Um, or and is there, what's in it that makes it rigid? Is it a wire? Uh, yeah, this is a like a sisal covered wire. Okay. We also use this satin covered wire, That's which fancy. is a little bit more flexible. Um, so you wanna grab your, uh, your piece of wire. And um, for this one, we're gonna make a kind of a loop crown and I measured your head earlier, right? Yeah. And so this is going to fit right on your head. And it just sits right there. Yeah. Okay. And then we're going to put our flower material around. So you want to grab some clippers and you want to kind of select what you want. Okay. Um, do you want to make this for Sure. Me? Okay. I'll try so anything three or four times. You are going to yeah. make little short bundles about okay. three to four inches long. So go ahead and clip. Do you want some bay leaf in yours? And why not? Okay. And um, I also got some lavender because look how pretty that That's is. It's beautiful. And when you're making you these, do you, do you think of like, is it the same as with other floral design that you do here? Do you think about the color and the texture or it, is, it that, is it different when you're making these? Uh, yeah, I mean, you think about what kind of vibe you want, what yeah. kind of color you want, um, if it's gonna match your wedding dress, yeah. you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> I, I, it, must, it has to match my wedding dress, Kim. Yeah. There's nothing else to it there. Um, so <laughs> then we use this corsage tape, and this is a, a wax-covered paper tape, and it stretches. Mm -hmm. So the trick is for this is to really um, pull it tight. And you notice that I kind of cleaned the yes. end of the stems. And you kind of make a little bundle. So you bundle your plant material like this. You take a piece of the tape and you really stretch it and you make kind of a little bundle. Oh, so you're, you're pulling that pretty tight. Right? Yeah, so then you make your next bundle. I failed you, I didn't cut that one short enough. Yeah, <laughs> it's okay. And this is, we're gonna go for a big fat bloom. This is a Lysianthus. This is a bicolor pink and white. Beautiful. Um, I like to pick things that are gonna hold. Yeah, um, because these aren't gonna have water, are they? Right, yeah. no water and um, they're short term. They'll last for kind of the length of an event, yeah. you know, kind of four to eight hours. Um, so you make these little bundles like this you kind of clip off the end so you can kind of see we have these three bundles and we can kind of see okay. what it's going to look like. And usually me, I kind of line it up to see kind of what my So it's my really vibe. almost like making a Christmas wreath or a different kind of exactly. wreath. Exactly, okay. yeah. Well, that makes it much easier to understand then well, for my simple mind. <laughs> so you're going to go ahead and okay. put this together. You're going to trust me again. Yeah. Okay, and so you pull it tight. Yeah. And then just, I'm trying to copy you and I'm not doing it clear. It's definitely kind of a small finger move. Yeah. Uh, okay. And then you, you just love roll it. it. Yeah. Okay. And then, and then you can just pull that off. And then we're going to take the clippers and kind of clip the end. Okay. Maybe. Um, and now we're ready to add our plant material to our hoop. Okay. Okay. So again, um, we're going to grab some tape. And the same type of tape, right? Yep. And then am I doing the tape yeah. the wrapping thing again? Yeah. Okay. And this is a little bit trickier because you have to go in the hoop, but you can do it. I, I thank you. Your faith will help me uh, conquer this, I'm sure. Okay, I see. Now you just, well, I'm not going to make this for a living, am I? Because I'm <laughs> not very fast at it. And then you just, oh, okay. 
What if you actually wad the tape up like I just did? <laughs> so you want to make sure the tape is all flat. Okay. So if it gets kind of folded, um, you can either start over. Yeah, you're good. And then do you do you add now? Yeah. More. So then we're going to break this off. You have a nice secure. It's not uh, wrinkled or anything. So then you're going to take your next bundle and you're going to lay it about three quarters down. So if you go too close, it's then it's blob. jumbled. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so then usually you can kind of see about right there. Okay. Got it. So then. And then you just do I'll the same start thing again. this for Thank you. you. So Thank you. So stretch it. <laughs> So Kim, now we took a couple of minutes and you added to this because clearly you're faster than I am, but I was Check wondering, out the peony. look at that. Yeah. Stunning. Yeah. And you see how I added the maple yeah. to pick up on the color. Yeah. That's another cool thing. It looks so rich right there. It really does. Yeah. So if we, if I come in and buy one of these, should I treat it like regular cut flowers and maybe keep it like chilled until the event that I'm going to Yeah. Wear? Um, what I would like you to do is I would like you to mist it. So oh, mist okay. it with water and then put it in a bag so it's enclosed. So we use a little box, but you can put it in a Ziploc bag oh, okay. and put it in the refrigerator and it will last um, a long time, actually. Here, and wait, I think I need to trade you out. Do you, <laughs> I, w I went from, from a, a and, uh, Greek thing. And the style thing. is also these big blooms. Here, look at the camera, yeah. honey. So big, huge peony. Um, kind of asymmetrical nice. and nice. Uh, I don't know that looks awesome and it, so it works for you it works okay <laughs> so you know if you're thinking to yourself well these are adorable I would Look. love to get <laughs> I would love to make some of these for my own whether you're having a party or an event and you're thinking I am just not sure how to do it they have all the supplies here so you can come down to geranium lake flowers pick up the supplies and I bet you could even ask some questions if you needed to on how to create them for yourselves or they already have some made, so you can just buy them and don't have to worry about it at all. Kim, thank you so much. It's always delightful. My you day. look so good. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you for watching Garden Time today. And William, I think we did it. I think we gained a lot of knowledge today and we <laughs> can graduate. <laughs> and we hope that every time you watch Garden Time, you also learn some more knowledge. And if you'd ever like a refresher course, you can go to gardentime.tv. William and I thank you for watching and we'll see you next week here on Garden Time. Judy, yep. do you remember when I asked you if you liked me? I mean, if you really liked me? Yeah, I liked you on Facebook. Yeah, well, I need you to do that again. Well, we really need everyone to like the new Facebook page for Garden Time. So you just go to gardentime.tv and click on the Facebook icon and like us again for our brand new page. Subaru Garden Days returns to Capital Subaru and Salem. Join us for a day of food, fun, and garden excitement. Select garden vendors join William and Judy on the parkway from 11 to 3. That's Subaru Garden Days, June 3rd at Capital Subaru. Your way on the parkway. The proceeding was a paid program of the Gustin Creative Group and its sponsors.